Hey guys, what's going on? This is John from Friends with Your Benefits. Look, unfortunately, tech layoffs are hitting the economy and many people out there are struggling and unfortunately suffering and they're taking steps and actions to protect themselves and their family. And one thing that commonly comes up is, hey, what am I gonna do for health insurance if I happen to lose my job or perhaps I'm in transition to another job? People out there have been asking me, hey, John, I've heard of this thing called COBRA insurance. What is it and should I actually elect it? Well, today we're gonna to talk about what COBRA is and we'll go over the pros and the cons and give you the information that you need in order to make an informed decision before you decide to elect it or decline coverage. Stay tuned. So what does COBRA actually stand for? Well, here's a hint. It has nothing to do with the mean snake that's out there, nor does it have anything to do with the fictional terrorist organization from the TV show and cartoon G.I. Joe. COBRA actually stands for Consolidated Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act of 1985, or COBRA for short. And the intention of COBRA is to help bridge the gap with your health insurance from your previous employer to your next employer. Now, in general, COBRA lasts for up to 18 months. There are some instances where it can actually last a little longer, but today we're gonna to focus on the general or the normal uses of COBRA. And typically in order to be eligible for it, you have to be working for an employer with 20 or more employees and you have to previously be eligible for benefits. Next thing that you need to know is that COBRA can be super, super expensive. What do we mean by that, John? So let's say you decide to elect single only coverage. You may be paying $600 a month, or if you happen to be electing family coverage, you may be paying $1,800 a month or more. Well, why is it so expensive? Well, when you're actually actively at work, most employers out there will actually subsidize a good portion of your premium. So you might be paying $200 a month for single coverage, or you might be paying four or $500 a month for family coverage if you choose to elect it. And when your employment ends, that subsidy is no longer required to be provided by your employer. So if you decide to continue your coverage through COBRA, you're paying the full boat unsubsidized COBRA rate. So it's definitely a lot of money and a lot of people look at it and they're like, holy cow, there's no way I can afford it and they decline coverage. Now there are actually some really good reasons why you may decide to actually elect COBRA. The first reason is some employers, but definitely not all, will subsidize your COBRA premiums. So if you happen to be offered COBRA as part of a severance package, they may say, hey John, you're gonna pay the active rates for up to six months, or maybe you're paying the active rates plus 20, 30, maybe 40%. And that really helps you bridge the gap between where you are today and hopefully where you land the next leg of your career. Another reason why you may decide to elect COBRA coverage is let's say you have an underlying health condition going on for you or one of your family members. You may decide that, hey, this treatment is super important to our health. And in order to maintain the health care that I need, and my family frankly deserves, I'm going to pay the additional premium to make sure there's no gap in coverage. Another reason out there is some people decide to elect COBRA when they decide to retire before they're 65. So here's a perfect example. Some people decide to retire at 63 and a half. The reason they decide to retire at 63 and a half is because they know that COBRA is good for 18 months. So if you retire at 63 and a half, Basically, your COBRA will end when you become eligible for Medicare in the month you turn 65. Now, as it relates to Medicare, there's definitely a few things that you need to know because Medicare can be crazy complicated. The first thing is some people out there, unfortunately, make poor choices because they honestly don't know as it relates to Medicare and COBRA. Typically, you have up to seven months to elect Medicare, three months before you turn 65, the month you actually turn 65, and then three months after. If you don't happen to sign up for Medicare during that enrollment period, you may be subject to a late enrollment penalty, or even worse, you might not be eligible until open enrollment of the following year. But to make matters more complicated, there's a thing out there called a Medicare special enrollment period. And with the Medicare special enrollment period, if you're actively at work, you can actually delay your Medicare election penalty-free until you decide to retire. If you want additional information on the Medicare special enrollment period, 
feel free to click the link on the video right here. Now, one thing that's super important is if you happen to be enrolled in COBRA, that special enrollment period does not apply as relates to Medicare. So you definitely want to sign up for Medicare as soon as you're eligible. Another option out there to consider is the public exchange. Now, in general, the public exchange will likely have lower premiums than you're paying through COBRA, but the trade-off with the public exchange is they happen to generally be narrow network HMOs. So the provider that you're seeing today may not be covered or may not be in network as it relates to the coverage or the health insurance that's available on the public exchange. There's also these things out there called short-term medical plans. They're not available in every state, but if your state happens to be one in which they are available, the premiums for these short-term medical plans can be a lot cheaper than COBRA, but there are a bunch of caveats and things that you need to look into before you actually decide to sign up for coverage. First thing is pre-existing conditions may apply and there may be dollar limits on what is actually covered. If you decide to sign up for one of those plans before you do, I really urge you, make sure you understand what you're buying before you decide to buy the product. Another thing you may wish to look at is, let's say you're married and your spouse happens to have access to health insurance through their own employer. If that's the case, you may be eligible for a so-called life event and you may be able to join your spouse's health insurance plan while you're trying to figure out what to do with your own health insurance. Definitely an option worthwhile considering, and it's going to be a hell of a lot cheaper than COBRA if you happen to elect it. Now, if you guys like what you're hearing, we want to encourage you to like the video and subscribe, and we'll be sure to make high quality videos like this in the future. Now, before we close out, there is actually a hidden hack as it relates to your COBRA insurance. Most people don't realize this, but you actually have 60 days from the date your employment ends to actually elect COBRA insurance. What do we mean by that, John? So let's say your employment ended on January 15th. You really have until March 15th to sign up for the coverage. And here's the best part. If you happen to sign up after your employment ends and you pay the COBRA premiums, your coverage is retroactive all the way back to January 15th. And it's like there was no gap in coverage. You may have to file a claim with your health insurance company, but there's definitely no gap as it relates to the underlying care that you want. So definitely a home run and an option out there if you're on the fence on electing COBRA, but you happen to have a claim and you need the health insurance to help pay for it. So we wanna hear from you guys. Have you ever been in a situation where you decided to elect COBRA? And if you did, what was the overall experience like? Comment below.